direct products groups. Given any pair of groups, we can define a group structure on the Cartesian product. Let's state this as a theorem. So let H and G be groups and let's denote their operations by circle and star respectively to emphasize that the operations in these groups may be very different. To find an operation on the Cartesian product H cross G by defining H1 G1 dot H2 G2 to be H1 circle H2 G1 star G2. We claim that H cross G with this operation is a group. Clearly it's a binary operation on H cross G, so we just need to check the three axioms. First, let's check the existence of an identity element. Because H and G are groups, they both contain identity elements, which will denote E sub H and E sub G. We claim that the pair EH EG is an identity for the Cartesian product. To do this, we have to choose an arbitrary element HG and H cross G and multiply it on the left by EH EG. By the definition of the multiplication in the Cartesian product, this is EH circle H EG star G. By the definition of an identity element in H and G respectively, this is just HG. Similarly, when we multiply HG on the right by EH EG, we again get HG. So we've verified that EH EG does indeed satisfy the requirements of being an identity element for H cross G. We next need to prove the existence of an inverse of an arbitrary element of H cross G. So let's pick an element HG in H cross G. We know that there exists an inverse for H, let's call it H prime. So H circle H prime is equal to EH and H prime circle H is equal to EH. Similarly, there exists an inverse of the element G, say G prime, that satisfies G star G prime equals EG and G star G is equal to EG. Then we claim that the pair H prime G prime is the inverse of HG. And again, we multiply HG on the right by this element and verify that we get, by the definition of the operation in the Cartesian product, H circle H prime, G star G prime, and that's equal to EH EG, which is the identity element of our group. We repeat this on the left, and again we get EH EG as required. Thus, we have proved the existence of an inverse of an arbitrary element in H cross G. Finally, we need to verify the associativity axiom. So for this, we have to pick three pairs in H cross G. So let's let H1, H2, H3 be elements of H, G1, G2, G3 be elements of G. So we have our three elements, H1, G1, H2, G2, and H3, G3 in the Cartesian product. So let's first take the product where we multiply the first two elements together first and then multiply the end result by H3, G3. So H1, G1 dot H2, G2 is equal to H1 circle H2 comma G1 star G2. When we multiply this by H3, G3, we get H1 circle H2 circle H3 and G1 star G2 star G3. By associativity in H, this become this is the same as H1 circle H2 circle H3. And similarly, <clears throat> we get G1 star G2 star G3. By the definition of the operation, in H cross G, this is H1 G1 dot H2 circle H3 G2 star G3. And by the definition again, 
of the operation in g star h. This last term is equal to h2g2 dot h3g3. So we get that the two ways of multiplying the three elements together are equal. That is, the associative law holds in h cross g. So we've proved that this operation does indeed define a group operation on h cross g. Let's have a look at a couple of examples. If we take the integers under addition and form the direct product of z with itself, <coughs> we get a group that can be visualized as the lattice of integer points inside the plane R2, with the operation being the usual vector addition of points AB plus CD is equal to A plus C, B plus D. Now let H be the element, the group with two elements, one minus one under multiplication. The group H cross H is an important group called the Klein four group. It has four elements, E, which is one, one, A minus one, one, B minus one minus one, and C minus one minus one. Note that every element of this group squared is equal to the identity. Moreover, we can find the complete multiplication table of this group fairly easily just by directly doing the operations, and we get this. <coughs> 